What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today we're going to be taking a look at the Civivi Knives Aquila, I think is how you pronounce that. I want to say Aquila, but I know that's incorrect. Um, this is a part of Civivi Knives higher end line. They have like their sub $40 line and then they've got their higher end stuff. Sub $40 stuff using 9CR18 MOV currently and uh, this is VG10. So this, this knife runs about $68. Um, Civivi Knives is of course essentially the budget brand of We Knives, which by the way, uh, this knife was provided uh, for review by the manufacturer. Uh, so thank you again, Civivi and We. Um, and uh, it will, um, of course, go on to some other reviewers uh, after I'm done with it. This isn't one that I'll be um, you know, keeping or anything like that. Uh, as always, I will try not to let that affect my review, but I don't, you know, I'm, I don't feel like obligated to say nice things just because it was provided for free. So I don't think I'll have a problem with that. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and take some measurements here real quick. Overall length of this knife is going to be about eight and a quarter. Let's do the blade. Blade length on this guy coming in at three and a half inches about to the scale. And blade length looks to be just about three and an eighth uh, in terms of cutting edge. You do have a forward choil there. Let's do some size comparisons here real quick. Against the Ontario Rat Model 1, Rat 1 coming in at 8.6 inches overall. How about the PM2? The PM2 is a good size comparison because we have a lot of similarities here. PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. You can see there what I'm talking about, the profile of the blade, profile of the handle. Um, obviously, thumb holes are different. You know, this uh, the, the Civivi looks like a tactical version of the PM2. Forward choils, you know, kind of in the same place, but uh, I thought that was an interesting size comparison there. Uh, how about Benchmade Griptilian? Benchmade Griptilian coming in at 8 inches overall, so same territory. And how about the Spider Codelica coming in at 7 inches? And just for fun, because I've got it in my pocket today, how about the Beg Knives Steelcraft Series 3 quarter Quaken coming in at 8 and a quarter, so about the same size. Uh, anyways, let's talk about uh, materials here. So for $68, by the way, this particular version looks to be sold out on Blade HQ. You can, of course, still get the uh, green Micarta version, or not Micarta, the green G10 version, and I think there's some other things out there. Um, uh, but you can still get those. This is a VG10 two-tone blade. So you can see there's black and then satin up here on the flats. Um, and uh, you've got steel liners that have been coated in some sort of very reflective. And it looks like just metallic reflective paint. Um, you have a thumb hole here. You've got um, a nice, um, it's, ple it's peel ply texture G10, but it's smooth. It's not like what you would get from uh, the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 um, or Manix 2 or Native 5 or anything like that. You can see the difference there. It's much smoother. Uh, you've got a lanyard hole down here, which is out of the way of the handle. You've got a nice backspacer in between the liners and G10 scales. Um, you have a very odd looking uh, pocket clip, which I'm not a big fan of. We'll talk about that later. Um, and then you've got two body screws. Um, on each side as well as uh, a pivot, a Torx head pivot here. The show side, I like how Civivi does this. The show side uh, just has the Civivi logo and then the rear side is the adjustment side. This is a liner lock, locking up nice and well early for a thin blade. It looks to be about 50% and of course the knife came perfectly centered. Action on this guy, as is to be expected with Civivi. If you're not familiar with Civivi knives, they offer excellent action uh, for their price point. We have not quite a false shut action, but very smooth. This knife does run on bearings. It's very easy to engage and disengage. Um, really satisfying. You know, it's almost like a, a budget um, ZT feeling um, flipper knife. Or rather, I mean, it feels exactly like a budget Wii. Uh, the, the, the Wii knives have excellently tuned detents for the most part. Flipping action is solid. This feels like a budget Wii. And uh, the uh, the fit and finish and execution is, is really good on it. Um, I, uh, I want to talk about, uh, let's go ahead and go through ergonomics here real quick. Um, I've got medium large size hands. You can see here that my hands do fit uh, all the way around this knife in the standard position. Up here in the choked up position on the forward choil, of course that is functional too. Though I will say this is a pretty small choil. So if you've got fat fingers or even really medium sized fingers, you do run the risk of getting up on that edge. So be careful about that. 
Um, it is definitely comfortable back here. There's a nice thumb ramp um, offering good traction there. There is some jimping on the back. Uh, you can see there it does lock your thumb in nicely. A um, little bit of traction there up underneath the flipper tab and of course on the uh, disengagement part of the lock bar. Um, really nice though. I mean you can lock into this knife really, really well. No problems there. You have a flat that carries out about 65% the length of the blade. A nice drop point blade with an upper swedge. Uh, thickness is, well it's probably 0 0.12, 0 0.11. Not, uh, not the 0.145 of the paramilitary two. Um, just to give you an idea there. Um, really nice looking blade. You know, uh, the, the uh, thumb hole is interesting. Uh, you can definitely fire it using the standard thumb flick. You can figure it out. It's easiest, obviously, to deploy with the flipper tab, but a close second on this knife would be the reverse flick. It is nice, you know, kind of, it's Spyderco-like in that sense where the reverse flick is, um, you're able to do that. It's not quite the same thing as using the Spyderco hole. It's just not quite, you know, the, the Spidey hole just is kind of the most convenient, you call it a mechanism, it's, it's the most convenient thing, you know, that, that is like, I mean, I know it was kind of the first, but... Nothing has ever quite measured up to the spidey hole in terms of that satisfaction you get when you do something that's an, an unorthodox means of deployment. Um, so, But this is nice. You know, it works just fine. And if you don't want to use the hole, then you've got the uh, flipper tab. And of course, because it is a hole, it's not going to really obstruct the cutting path. So there's nothing wrong there with that there. Um, let's talk about some things that I don't like about this knife. Um, now the first thing I'm going to go through are nitpicks. These are opinions. Um, so you, you might really like this stuff. So you don't have to listen to me. I don't like two tone blades. I don't like partially coated blades. Um, and then, you know, there's some satin in there too. I just don't like that. I either want the whole thing DLC coated or I want the whole thing satin finished or tumbled or something like that. Um, I, I just don't like that. Um, not all of these come this way you can get a it's either a fully satin finished blade or a stone wash blade I just wanted to, I just needed to say that I'm just not a fan of that they do um, uh, coat the inside of this and then it's satin on the flats and then again coated on the um, the uh, uh, bevel here and the swedge up top um, I'm not, I'm just not a fan of that um, but you know like I said that's okay you don't you don't have to get it this way um, I kind of I'm not really a hundred percent decided on the liners on these guys um, the gold is you know it kind of looks good with black I like bronze in contrast with black gold is kind of you know it's really it's it's really flashy so I don't know what I think about that I think Civivi would benefit from offering the same model with a multitude of different liner colors and I don't know if that's the case yet but if I had an option between teal purple gold blue you know then you're able to coordinate with the scale color but you should also offer it in just a plain satin metallic or just a raw steel liner color for people who don't want to add that color to it maybe that adds cost at a manufacturing level maybe that just adds too much complexity to a line that is growing and expanding and I don't know that's just my thought on that. Um, it's not really that big of a deal, and it's not going to stop a lot of you from purchasing this knife, and it shouldn't. Uh, that's just my thoughts on it. Um, so we'll go ahead and move on here to something um, that's that's a little bit more in the realm of um, a, a, oh, a, a, a functional issue. Now, when I say functional issue, really what I mean is a material choice. This knife costs $68, and the upgraded versions of these um, Civivi knives are using VG10 steel. Now, in, you know, five, six, seven years ago, um, VG10 steel for this price range, I think, was considered king or nearly king. It was not a, it was not something that people questioned or contested if it was on a model that was a, a really good model. You know, if we're talking about, I always use the Delica as an example. You know, the Spyderco Delica and VG10 running 75 bucks. Um, that knife, you know, was was not one that people questioned as far as whether or not, for the most part, I know there's always people out there questioning things, you know, and not liking certain things, but uh, for the most part, the Spyderco Delica for $75 was considered an amazing deal. It was an amazing knife. Now it's kind of starting to fall out of that, that zone. And uh, so I'm, I'm, you know, kind of 
uh, I don't want to, <laughs> but the word that popped into my brain was flabbergasted. And I was like, why would I say that? I never, I've never organically said the word flabbergasted, but I don't know. Maybe that's the right word to use here. Um, I was confused as to uh, why they chose that on their upgraded line. I mean, maybe it's because across the board, what we're seeing is D2 steel. From a functional standpoint, D2 steel to me makes a lot more sense. Yes, you gain the added benefit in VG10 of it being a fully stainless steel, so it's more corrosion resistant. But to me, this line of knives is going to be used. This is a this is a knife that I would use gladly and happily. Um, it has the fidget factor. It's got a nice ergonomic shape. Um, the blade shape is ground in a way that it's going to function well. It's nice and thin. Um, VG10 steel to me is just a letdown for a knife that... Um, really is, is going to be um, a user knife for a lot of people. And all, all that's going to happen is you're, you're, um, you're in a situation where you've paid $68 for a knife that's going to need sharpening quite often. D2 steel is much, uh, ha has much higher toughness. It's nearly a stainless steel at 12% chromium, and it will absolutely hold an edge a lot longer. Now, I know maybe we're at the point, maybe some of you thought, you know, everybody's seeing D2 on everything. Maybe they're bored of it. Maybe VG10 makes it more interesting. I don't. It, that that kind of is hard for me to believe. I, I have to imagine that VG10 steel is probably, I don't know, maybe is it less expensive than D2? I have no idea. I'm really confused as to why they went to VG10 though. D2 steel makes way more sense. Even if it is boring, it would have been a lot more satisfying to see D2 on this knife. Honestly, if this knife was D2 and we had G10 and uh, and steel liners here um, for 68 bucks. Uh, you'd have a real winner. This knife is close, but as far as like all the knives in the um, upgraded VG10 line, um, or the upgraded line from Civivi, uh, I'm seeing VG10 across the board and I'm just, maybe it's just me, but I'm not super impressed by that. Um, I just, I don't know. I, I don't like VG10. Um, I, I'm, I'm a much bigger fan of D2. A lot of you will agree with me. Some of you will disagree with me. That's totally fine. Maybe some of you, you know, a lot of people, that's not going to dissuade you from buying this. And honestly, um, I, I do want to say this. I think this is a good enough design where while, uh, you know, the VG10 turns me off in a way that I wouldn't buy this, I d I'm not going to tell you that you would be making a bad choice buying this knife for $68. I think there are some better contenders out there. There are some justifications for some better knives. But I am not going to tell you that you're making a bad choice because you are still getting an excellent design. You're getting excellent fit and finish, excellent functionality, utility. You know, you're getting a trustworthy knife. It, it does run on bearings. I can't remember if I said that or not. Um, but seriously, I mean, look at this action. Uh, this is a reliable flipping action, whether you are going to um, push button it or if you're going to light switch it. You know, it doesn't matter if I'm using, <laughs> well, that was a weak flip. I am notorious for doing that. The flipping action's great, guys, and then I just misfire it. But, you know, whether you get a bit of a weak flip with a non-dominant finger or a non-dominant finger on a non-dominant hand, it's got a great flipping action. Uh, I'll give that to, to Civivi Knives. They've got nicely tuned detents and reliable flipping action. So the combination of that, the ergonomics, the design, the fit and finish, you know, the forward twirl, I love that. Even though it's not the most spacious thing in the world, I'm a big fan of that. Um, you also have um, a um, pocket clip that is mountable on the right or left-handed side for tip-up carry, which is the way I prefer. So lefties, this is a knife that you can enjoy, despite the fact that the liner lock is really meant for a right-handed person. I don't have a, you know, obviously I'm, I'm right-hand dominant, but I can still manipulate this knife um, plenty easy with my left hand, so you can do that. I don't like that pocket clip. I don't like knives that have a medium, medium to large size body and a skinny little clip. That's weird. It just, that clip to me does not look like it belongs on this knife. Now that's, again, that's a cosmetic thing that's, maybe it's just my issue. Um, so you don't necessarily have to, you don't have to agree with me. You know, I'm not saying don't buy this because the pocket clip is terrible and that's a fact. You know, some people might like this clip. It's not deep carry. It's going to carry with about this much out of your pocket. Not too bad, but there's quite, there's still quite a bit sticking up but you can mount it over there. I just, this knife would make a lot more sense to me on a much smaller and more narrow knife. You know, but on this, it, it's just weird. I, I'm not I'm not sure what to think about it, but it, it is not a satisfying looking 
pocket clip. It does function just fine. It hold, I mean, it holds the knife onto your pants. As far as what a pocket clip is designed to do, it does do that successfully. It's just oddly thin or narrow, and it's, it's weird looking to me. Um, overall, I can't 100% um, recommend this knife. Uh, if I were going to um, change a couple of things, you know, obviously the pocket clip and the steel, um, I would make uh, some more liner colors available. Um, but those are little things, you know, I mean, the biggest thing being the steel, that's, that's a pretty big thing to me. But if you had D2 steel on this guy, uh, and this was a tumbled or satin finished blade, and I had some uh, uh, more choices for liner colors and a different pocket clip, I'd be buying this knife for myself, honestly. If those changes were made at $68, I would not have a problem paying for this knife and, and uh, having it for myself and using it because I enjoy that. Um, I, I could also do with a, a cutout here, the choil being just, just a little bit bigger so I don't have to worry about running my finger up on the blade, but um, those are little things. Overall, if you do decide to buy this knife, I think you're still making a decent choice. I think it's going to make you happy, especially if you can overlook some of those things that I, I brought up. Um, but for me, it's just, it's not going to do it. Um, it's it's not, a, not a knife that I, I can fully recommend and not one that I would, I would keep for myself. But anyways... I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, then definitely subscribe to my channel because there is uh, absolutely more coming. In fact, there's some really interesting stuff coming this weekend. Um, I've got more uh, knives being shipped in. Some traditionals. I know some of you guys are that are fans of traditionals. I am slowly becoming um, a traditional junkie so that we do have some really cool, great Eastern cutlery knives coming in. Um, so stay tuned for that. I also have an episode planned. I found my very first pocket knife that my dad gave me, and I have a really cool story about it. Some kind of Genesis stories. I kind of dug into... Um, uh, my my past and and figured out exactly you know the moment I think the moment uh, that I I decided I love pocket knives and I think it's an interesting story and I think a lot of you will connect with it because it's a fairly common story and uh, a lot of you especially uh, those of you that are around the uh, 30 years old or maybe a little older a little younger um, you're going to connect with me and uh, some of you may actually have the exact same origin story as far as your love for pocket knives. Um, so if, if you're interested in that, then, um, you know, stay tuned because that is all coming. But anyways, thanks again for watching, guys, and have a great day.